second part of the uh, the seminar uh, we'd like to invite the audience to be uh, participating so please if you have any questions on any aspect of things please don't hesitate just raise your hands and we'll find a way to answer your question second session ideally we want to uh, the idea of keeping it for 2 hours was not only we on this side speaking we all know enough i guess and you guys are in the thick and thin of the whole thing so please feel free to chip in questions comments experiences uh, i think we are on the same side in that sense got it so uh, just to get the ball rolling um, i think what we've established is that you have a whistleblower complaint which points to an allegation uh, an allegation requires you to look into it to come out with and understand a certain set of facts that set of facts may require you to disclose it to the uh, the statutory auditor uh, the statutory auditor may well ask you okay please explain to me what steps you have taken and what are the what what kind of internal investigation you have done he has the ability to tell you to do take more steps or not take more steps depending on the completeness of what you've done he may ask you what legal measures you've taken have you filed a civil suit have you filed a police complaint is there an fir involved and this is in his role as a statutory auditor and the law requires <coughs> him to ask that so uh, consequently you may have legal proceedings so this is how a simple whistleblower complaint can very well find itself into a court of law as well as into uh, statutory reportings uh, compliances and these could have a cross border implication because an indian company with indian employees as our learned panelists have explained may have answering capabilities somewhere else in the world and someone somewhere may get arrested no. <laughs> <laughs> okay now with that let's jump into the next question which is that when you start an investigation um a natural question that pops up for most people is there are privacy implications of employees uh nobody wants to impinge upon the privacy of employees no respons uh, responsible corporate wants to do that today but the law requires you to conduct a proper investigation so what exactly uh, where do the boundaries lie how do you ensure that you complete a, a complete investigation uh, but you don't impinge upon the privacy of employees uh, with that i'll start with jag and then we'll move onwards yeah. <clears throat> thanks uh, thanks sir so you know of course uh, with the privacy right having become the fundamental right uh, now so there are certain precautions that we have to take and uh, most of those precautions are uh, you know how best we balance the right of employee with the rights of the uh, entity to conduct that fa uh, fact finding exercise uh, so look there are, there can be lot of nuances these days on that uh, one can actually write a full policy uh, on what to do what not to do but uh, uh, policy framework you know we which started with uh, having some consent uh, some requirement rather so whenever people use you know byod or their own device uh, there there is an express consent uh where uh, you know employee signs off to say that look during any uh, you know kind of inquiry or demand by the organization for investigation i will cooperate and give that device uh after that <coughs> of course there are uh, you know cooperation so now what is cooperation what is not cooperation can also be debatable so because a lot of these devices have the mix of personal data especially if it is personally owned but doesn't mean that the entire data is uh, you know uh, is is personal data because any data that has a nexus or linkage with company's business you know communication correspondence with suppliers correspondence with customers with other employees you know an argument can be made that it is a uh, it it is a corporate data as well so the company has right to it but of course it is so much commingled that you know in order to take it you inevitably have to also take the personal data because it is not isolated there and that is where i think you know the some of the rules that were there earlier even in the computer system like even in the company's computer system there can be personal data of the employee like banking data 
or you know certain other kind of you know let's say uh, date uh, correspondence medical. with spouses medical uh, spouse or medical uh, information which also has to be excluded from the review so so definitely i think you know uh, privacy has to be navigated with lot more uh, caution now because no matter what you find no matter what you uh, you know what, what conclusions you have reached it may ultimately get uh, you know sidestepped fully because of some breaches of the privacy and of course you know the fruits of the poisonous tree and everything can be set aside so i think that that is uh, you know what what we have seen so consents are often used now uh, uh, you know consent of the employee to say that look i am voluntarily giving it in the interest of cooperation if the employee doesn't give of course the corporate has the right to you know draw negative inference or whichever way you know those have to be there uh, there is also a probable cause uh, that that has to be you know established because one a complaint comes one has no direct right to ask for the uh, you know like the private devices so one has to first have reasonable grounds to ask for it so that may be established through at least the prima facie case uh, of doing other sort of you know uh, investigations maybe covert or overt investigation once you have established that there is a prima facie case that you know that is there then of course you know one can explore the uh, personal device so that is usually how you know the this topic is played because it's a fine balance between the rights of the individual employee and the uh, rights of the corporation or uh, you know employer so i hope that answers it it certainly does can i hear your yeah so i think yes more or less the same i think the need of the r is clearly that it can't be just a line or two in the employment contracts anymore uh, the way technology is the way we are blurring our lines between our personal and professional or work lives the way business is being conducted i think it is imperative that organizations beforehand have very detailed policies i think the time has come where you have to be prescriptive at times to really set the boundaries of where organization can exercise because although we understand privacy rights we also realize that investigations cannot be done unless and until you have access to information so doing that fine balance so that we don't jeopardize tomorrow someone saying oh my right to privacy is being impinged but at the same time i think doing what is required to do an independent investigation uh, so that is very important sbdi rules clearly set up the format framework in terms of the sensitive information so that has to be clearly kept in mind when the investigation is also uh, about engaging third party vendors so now we are not only collecting the information so we have to ensure that it is collected properly but if we are sending it across to third parties the diligence or the care that is required uh, needs to be set across because ultimately if there is a data breach then the corporation is responsible either directly or vicariously so you know ensuring that all stakeholders understand the need uh, another thing that i would probably like to highlight is sometimes even investigation teams are swayed by the information that is available right okay let's look into this as well and that as well exercising proportionality <coughs> how much is really important this is the allegation this is the scope of the investigation does this information is really required to come to any conclusion and if the answer is no don't collect that information because that's one big way of <coughs> addressing the data privacy aspect of it and the security therefore encrypted data clearly something that needs to be done. I just have a question there yes so since you mentioned spdi and there are certain sort of sort of benchmarks that are specified there is i mean given that i haven't done this uh, enough so wanted to understand if you could give me a couple of examples in terms of what information for instance is usually considered beyond the realms of uh privacy and you typically do not go into that uh just as a practical example so given that you guys have done these investigations or you have been part oh, of these investigations some things that are typically considered personal and are not usually 
uh, or as, uh, rather generally sifted away in terms of look your first definition of personal data or sensitive data is coming from that okay right so we are not here to interpret what is there but in terms of what is it that you need to look into now clearly if there is a procurement fraud mm. right i might need to look into the bank statement of the employee right but if the allegation is not about procurement fraud do i really need to look at the bank statement simply because it is available on the computer typically we never right? uh, yeah sorry sorry to interrupt but typically we would we would never look at somebody's bank statement without consent yeah that's Let's put it this the, way yeah. what you are saying okay. yeah, yeah. so you that get a specific kind of, app, because understand. you may find bank statements on the laptop right yeah. because people do look at their uh, bank uh, while working they would not realize right. right that they will download their bank statement they will send it to someone to their wife to the ca or whatever right or income tax returns or something like that so while she is right unfortunately for last 4 years 5 years we have been struggling to get a proper data protection law in right. india which is in the draft stage for the longest time we can think of but only thing guidance that we have is the regulations under the information technology act and only thing it says is personal sensitive data unless there is a consent don't do it yeah. right, right. Uh, so that's the length and breadth of guidance under law right exactly so it's, so it's medical so typically practically medical data banking data and personal information like name age gender this that whatever suppose there is a form filled or whatever we will never touch that data unless there is a proper consent That's taken it. otherwise we'll keep it for whatever reasons uh, but so i'll give you a little shift to this okay okay spd is there an explicit consent always helps even though there might be an employment contract even though Correct. your app may have inbuilt consent forms but i'll tell you the the health data might also be available with the company themselves yeah. because there is an annual preventive health maintenance of every employee and that data may be available with them so i think the most important thing is what is it required and yes it's always a good practice that if you are venturing into the territory which is sensitive personal data then don't just bank on the normal consent take an explicit consent which is more meant for investigations but we have also seen employees that when they are confronted with an investigation and they might realize that their phone has something incriminating they refuse you know that's where the app based consents helps us a lot because then we do counseling to them to make them realize the moment you downloaded that company app or platform you have consented to share this information as part of any investigation protocol so those things helps and then this whole thing about negative inference we counsel them that if you have not done anything wrong then cooperate with the investigation share it but yes it's still the ultimately it is a decision that is to be made by the employee now if in spite of everything the employee refuses to cooperate or not really share you can't do much about it yeah but keep in mind that what we are talking over here is the state of affairs in india today uh there are implications abroad so for example there may be an fcp implication right. and uh, a us uh, uh, lawyer may very well look at the situation and have a different perspective on it and say why did you not do more to get this particular device if you are under the impression that evidence of potential alleged wrong wrongdoing lies on this device because then the then the basic thing about whether the investigation has been done holistically may itself get questioned okay. also so at that stage also yeah. at that stage what helps is let's say she will first say that look today i am doing it right mm. if you don't share this data then obviously we'll have to involve sail and uh, you know jagwinder and if they are not able to conclusively do anything then we'll have to report it to a police and they will come and take they are, you can't say no to them right so sometimes you know people come along in that sense that we rather deal with this situation today 
and do some kind of a deal on cessation of employment do whatever xyz and move out rather than make it more onerous at some point in time when it goes outside the real more control of the company and things like that so these are all tactical issues these are not strategic <laughs> in that sense i mean what i have just seen is based on my experience obviously since gentleman obviously mentioned that fcpa has its clause everywhere pretty much so the level at which a us lawyer being the in house guy or i mean a foreign law firm who's kind of working with you will have a very different perspective about things and things in india can be very very far from their reality agreed and no, agreed fact, but fact, i'll, I'll fact, tell you what US has less stringent uh, data privacy laws than most yeah. other countries. Yes. Yeah. GDPR is the gold standard. But you know, I have a slightly different perspective. You see, when a company gives you a laptop, right. it is a company asset, and uh, the laptop is meant for company company work. work. The company may say that you can use it for personal, but that does not give you a right to say that you cannot access the information that I have on my laptop. Hmm. So the utopian way to say is that I need consent for everything, but it doesn't work that way in actual right, practice, right, right. as you know. If I have a company laptop and I use uh, personal information in the laptop, if the company wants to do a search of the laptop. It doesn't really require uh, the employee's consent because the laptop is the company's. Yes, it's property. It's company's property. And the issue is more. I tell you is that usually when we get these whistleblower complaints, they are anonymous. Okay. You and they don't really come with a huge amount of uh, evidence. Data, yeah, yeah. evidence. Yeah. So you have to start from scratch. So when you start from scratch, you do the first thing that most people do, as you know, uh, Jagwinder will say, you look, you take the uh, the laptop that the employee has, and you do a search. If he has personal information, that is bound to come up in the search. It will, yes. You're not going to go back and ask him, can I take your permission to do that? So it doesn't work that way. If the search reveals that there is some uh, in incriminating data, that's when the real investigation starts. See, having said that, you know, privacy, to my mind, in India is a very <coughs> nebulous uh, concept nobody really uh, you go to a shop you buy something he says i want to invoice you give me a mobile number and you hand over your mobile number the mobile number is also personal data because it identifies you but because it is so nebulous here we don't really realize that the importance even from an employee perspective with your employer what are the rights that you have vis-a-vis -vis your own personal data it's it's not enough that the employer can at any time say that i can take this data what even medical data the employer may collect medical data for annual checkups But he can't use it for anything else for because the data you're given is only for the, the medical checkup, not for investigations. Similarly, if you're given your employee your bank account data for for your salary, that he can use it only to credit salary to your account. He can't use it for any other purpose. <laughs> That's the principle on 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 privacy. Yeah, I think generally yeah. as a society we are. As an Indian society, we are programmed that with the concept of privacy is pretty much look in privacy the doesn't for most people in privacy India, right? doesn't so, exist privacy. for us as yeah. a concept. Correct. But I think we have come are... from a, a society where most of our letters, most private letters, were open Correct. postcards, were right? Open postcards. So <laughs> everybody read. Everybody yeah, read it. Yeah, but I will also <laughs> tell you is privacy is used during investigation yeah. these days when an employee realizes yeah. I have something incriminating. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we are and we are talking about senior leadership teams. They know yeah. their rights. They know when to invoke and they know when to step back. so so that that is very true because i think you know people who are white collar crimes criminals they are definitely aware of this as shield that is available yeah, to them so it may may not be known i i may or may not care too much about some of the other things i do care more about adhar because you know i think that is more but uh, for other pan and all i think everyone is taking it even if you do google search i think lot of pans are available but uh, i think you know when it comes to investigation you will it is phenomenally strange that you know how many people know about the right to privacy who are subjects of the investigation sure, but, uh, yeah. i i, mean, I have a basis no, covered right before we yeah, venture into something i think like we that. have to be a little fair you see today yeah. the mobile devices and the extension of uh, the the person you know everything is there in your mobile device yeah so if somebody makes an anonymous for example if someone makes an anonymous complaint about me Yeah. When the company comes and asks me for my mobile device, why would I give it? I may not have done anything yeah, wrong, yeah. but why would I give my so, mobile sorry, device? Because I have so much. What is the guarantee that I am getting from the company that the private information that I have on the mobile yes, device is yes. going to be protected? Yes. Especially if you are going to engage third-party investigators, <coughs> your information goes through several layers. Yeah. Who is responsible? Yeah. 
So, sir, I'll, I'll just add to it. And I think that is a very genuine concern. What we have seen in some of the high-profile, uh, you know, cases these days, one is involvement of uh, a sort of, you know, independent person who does only that. So, wherever there must be, you know, so let's say someone says, okay, right to privacy, I, I, I am not bound to do it. So, some organizations will say, hai, you know, we understand uh, that. But if we put in a check, which is like, you know, what in the US, I think it is called master or something. So, it's a master check, which will say that, okay, I will take the data. I will isolate everything that is private, like private photos, private things, you know, whatever you define as what is private and whatever is not private. So, for example, if a, a WhatsApp file will come as a big consolidated file, maybe 10 GB, 20 GB, whatever that is. So someone will try to isolate that and say, okay, this is the data that is potentially relevant for the organization because it is with suppliers, it is, you know, communication with that. And this is data that is purely exclusive, which is like, let's say medical or whichever, however, howsoever you define it. So there is that check, but that is a very rare check and it is an expensive check. But yeah. it has been used. No, but but there are there are corporations which clearly state in their bring your own device policy, mm. which clearly states that if you are using <coughs> even your personal devices for work related communication, yeah. then you are also enabling the organization to access that your private device. Yeah. yeah. So so one is that check. The other one we have seen, and this and was the other way that if you use the company devices for your private work, so then, then you cannot uh, yes, yeah. stop the, the company so, from looking yeah, at it. Not really, you see, what happens is that if I have a phone, which is my personal device, for convenience, I tell, I, the company says that I can, your outlook can be put on your phone. If I agree to that, then my phone becomes also a device which I use for official work. But if I say, no, sorry, I don't want uh, to do any work on my phone, then, to my mind, the employer will find it extremely difficult to say, no, I want to see your phone. Yeah. Because you may have been exchanging messages with... Yeah. So there are possibly yeah. people still use two phones in this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's possible. No, so there are a lot of people yeah. who use two phones purposefully. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that is true. So, so I think that uh, I'm just looking at the table over here and I'm saying how many of us have two phones each and that tells you something. But, but I think the larger, more telling thing over here is that from the beginning of the seminar, the topic of privacy has evoked the most passion. So this is something that is close to people's heart. Not only people who have done something wrong, but also people who have not done anything wrong because we don't want our personal information out there and we're becoming more and more conscious and aware of it. So it is certainly our right. But as the right of a corporate or as a duty and obligation of a corporate, they have to look and examine where potential evidence lies and they have to make all efforts to go out and get it. Now, with that... I'm and I would like to just add one. Probably the Morgan Stanley penalization is, I uh -huh, believe, yeah. is a game changer. For the first time, a corporation has gone on record to penalize employees for using unapproved, unauthorized platforms for work related such as WhatsApp such as WhatsApp it can be WeChat it can be Telegram it can be anything but I for think for work this, related stuff yes you so, use WhatsApp is what they so they have a so policy, their policy not to clearly use. calls out but still employees have gone beyond and use WhatsApp for work related in uh, uh, communication it's more of a cultural thing because we don't do that much of a demarcation in terms of how we are Approaching no, it's, but it's I think most WhatsApp corporations, I can tell you, multinational corporations in India today have very clear policies calling out these are the approved medium of communication and these are the unauthorized, unapproved medium of communications mm -hmm. and you are directed as a policy to say you are not supposed to use these unauthorized platforms yeah. for any work related communication. Yeah, but in fact that doesn't work because everywhere, given WhatsApp has 650 million Indians using WhatsApp, <laughs> the tendency is, yeah. I'll tell you, the reason why it's simple, we talked about technology some time back, it's so convenient, you know, to send messages on WhatsApp is more convenient than using Outlook. That is true, Incl so, including so calling, I think. I agree, calling, I agree, but WhatsApp at the same time, I will talk about uh, a real life situation. Under FCPA, we are under obligation to hand off our all information. Now, if work-related communication is happening on WhatsApp, we don't really have access to the servers, we don't really have access to a lot of things. 
and then we kind of fault yeah. on those lines so it yeah. is it and it will become very very important there are several organizations uh, i have happened to work on in one of them where uh, you know they clearly do not allow you cannot download an unauthorized platform yeah. Yeah. so if your company As mobile or email is there question. and you are making that choice yeah. then you cannot download on so just to add i think see ultimately when we are talking about investigation sometimes the the outcome is what is the action you are going to take and some of these limitations lead to you are not able to take an action right but actually having whatsapp and having communication through whatsapp is breach of data protection policy of the organization which in itself can lead to termination <coughs> as well So another said, another kind of felony in a way yeah so 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 the point is that you can catch the nose whichever way you want if you want to and hence Thank you. you know something as simple as using whatsapp for few messages can also be a heinous crime so as to say because you never know the importance of that data because the employee is not going to give you that data and hence how do i prove it <coughs> so it could be you know yeah yeah it, 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 you know, it's you see the, the the corporate then has to take a call you see yeah. for example some companies don't allow you to they dis disable your uh, usb so that the laptop uh, and yeah. they allow you only to do official work on the laptop others because it's convenient allow these things because then data is easily transferable so you know it's it's a question of end of the day what is good for business and what is you know good from yeah. a security perspective you have to find a balance yeah. so just to add like anyone from listed companies here now with sebi's focus on up unpublished price and set as information yeah. it gets very tricky in terms of information sharing and here the issue is not a personal liability <coughs> it is a personal liability in the sense of employee for the organization it is a liability where you can actually go to jail for 10 years if you are passing upsi and the fines are also incurred and again here the organization is not liable to protect itself it's the employee who has to go and the burden of proof is on yes, the sir. person it's assumed that you have leaked the information so if something of this sort happens i mean it is on you to prove otherwise so it becomes very tricky and like the boundaries of issues like i think somebody said that uh, kickback was actually the information here right Uh, it was not really some money so if information can lead to benefits in stock market then imagine the regulatory action or the focus on some of these uh, financial crimes if i can use that word becomes very important and hence data limitations become all the more uh, sensitive and i think you talked about uh, policy within the organization to define these boundaries becomes very critical because later on the regulatory bodies or enforcement body tell the organizations you have not done adequate procedures in that sense to protect the information so so these are important issues which we see in real life situation where shades of gray become uh, difficult to navigate so so uh, maybe i can add this one so what we have seen is you know uh, not a policy under the cc but in some organizations who have actually been investigated and then some monitor has been put in the us right so it's the part of monitoring uh, monitorship defer positive so uh, in one organization what there was an express condition that you will move all your communications to the enterprise uh, authorized servers so first the first action is you cannot use whatsapp signal telegram etc for any personal uh, for any official business so how do you implement how do you comply with that so that is one but once that is achieved then basically what you are saying is any correspondence with suppliers customers inter say you know like these day, uh, days microsoft teams has come so we see that lot more group chats etc have now moved on because earlier 3 years ago there was no other choice like the convenience of whatsapp but now at least microsoft teams does offer uh, you know almost maybe slightly Teams less than there yammer is there uh, i think so, now so there are th enterprise there are enterprise solutions and those are accessible now of course those are internal solution they are not with external uh, people right those only with those people so i think uh, you will and i am hoping that you know because we we are often uh, on the other end where we want to receive information but we are impeded many times 
that there is a policy change which will require such communications to be on the accessible devices and if anything is not on the accessible device that per se also becomes a violation or like you know as uh, i think tanaya said you know the uh, counter offense or the you know companion offense itself so with all these complexities and complications you know personal data personal device what can a company do why why should a company ask for this there is one very clear answer if a company is so protective about its information its data and its ability to conduct a complete investigation all it needs to do is give its employees a phone the same way it gives a laptop it then has the ability to ask for the phone back no questions asked that's the right of a company now if a company has a byod policy in place you might have some complexities yeah. for which consent then becomes necessary so that is how you navigate the challenge of privacy but i think with this passion what you're seeing is the awareness of companies to actually prosecute complaints or or conduct an investigation to its logical end and then take steps under law now obviously what kind of steps are taken under law do you file criminal do you file civil that is something a company will take a decision on based on the nature of the issues and the nature of the findings but uh tanaya can i request you to talk about a little more about uh when an investig when a, a whistle blowing complaint or any kind of complaint allegation comes up how uh, do you see corporate india changing its willingness to uh, follow up with a complete investigation and remedial action i think there is a sea change i see first is with the seriousness with which today whistle blower complaints or otherwise are investigated internally by organizations i think gone are the days where the uh, 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 a small triage of people used to just say oh this is a vague complaint this is a meaningless complaint this doesn't have enough data to investigate further so just close it off i think gone are the days the organizations understand the responsibility that if they are not doing justice to those allegations the whistle blower has a recourse to a regulator to take things forward or social media or social media well that's a another menace by itself right uh, but i think corporations are clearly invested now in the process they are clearly <coughs> looking into each and every allegation and trying to do such that tomorrow if they are questioned they can basically establish that the investigation is independent objective holistic and whatever was the outcome the appropriate disciplinary actions have been taken if there was any need for any mitigation actions if there was any need to revisit <coughs> policies procedures internal control framework that has all been taken for right reputational damage clearly social media if it gets involved you have a trial by millions of people who don't even know what is the real matter or the core issue which is uh, a big uh, problem uh, for anyone so i think that is clearly there but i think more so for from an <coughs> multinational perspective i can clearly tell you there are very few means okay uh, if the dollar threshold is really high and there is a materiality figure and i know my statutory auditor is going to question that you have a fraud of this kind of sizes why haven't you pursued a criminal action perhaps then only we look forward to a legal remediation otherwise most multinational corporations are happy to do an internal investigation and close it there uh the way our regulators the way our uh, justice system is designed i don't think there is really much uh i would say inclination to pursue those legal remedies but yes if there is a say a high stake <coughs> fraud or some other thing you know that tomorrow because of the caro guidelines the statutory auditor is going to question oh you have had a loss of uh you know x million dollars what are you going about it are you pursuing actions i have to show that yes i have pursued actions 
So that's yes. how I kind of like to summarize. Thank you. Uh, do you have any thoughts on this? Well, you know, um, if you if you ask me what has changed, <coughs> I think uh, the technology has a has a big role to play because uh, the way uh, you know in the good old days you would have paper kind of complaints, you know. but today now you have a, if you have a proper functioning whistleblower system, everything gets tracked. The complaint comes in, even if it's a voice complaint, it gets transcribed, it gets recorded. So the the question of not taking action or sweeping something like those days are all gone. That's one. Secondly, I think even from a governance perspective, companies are now becoming much more aware of the reputational damage that can happen if you don't nip these uh, issues in the bud. So the sooner you take action on complaints, the better it is from, for the organization as a whole. So this way, what you do is you build, and then you also, you know, apart from your external stakeholders, you also have your internal stakeholders, your own employees. You know, if you have a whistleblower, they should, they, and then if an employee complains, he needs to know that the company is going to take some action. So I think that uh, has, has also made the organization that much more aware that overall, from a, from a holistic kind of perspective, there is a need to have a well-functioning whistleblower system. There's a need to investigate complaints thoroughly, and there's a need to find closure. Thank you. Your thoughts on this? I think that's covered. Okay, so I think uh, with that, let's move quickly on to uh, the approach of regulators and law enforcement agencies because that's something that we've seen a sea change in the evolution. Uh, Vyapak, your thought on how that has changed? Yeah, I think that is a complete change, right? I think 10 years back uh, when a client used to come with a show cause notice, even from well-established regulators like SEBI or uh, RBI or some food regulator or customs or whatever or even certain regulators under labor and employment laws because those were very active uh, for not following standing orders or factories act and you know things like that I think 80 percent 90 percent of them uh, you know we used to look at it and say okay it's a very shoddy investigation. They don't have information. They have missed on most of the sections that even apply. Don't worry. In six months, two years, we'll get it out. I think that was the general approach. I think people were relying more on the uh, bad work of the regulators rather than good work of lawyers or the corporations. Uh, I think what has changed completely is the kind of uh, legal and technological inputs that these regulators now get. Uh, look at any regulators, I think KPMG or NDA would be like advising those regulators. Some of the regulators have more than 100, 120, 150 lawyers working under them. Uh, great technology uh, experts working under uh, the uh, for, for their investigation. So, one, the investigation has become very, very good. Uh, second, I think they have much more better legal uh, recourse uh, to draft the right show cause notice, to draft the right provisions, to articulate the show cause notices on the non compliances. <coughs> so, I think <coughs> that has completely changed. Uh, and third, I think the information flow between the regulators. Uh, we have seen you file something with X and next day you will get a notice from regulator Y uh, based on that information. There is a huge database which is getting shared between different regulators. So I think in my view these are the three major reasons uh, why today any show cause or any letter from regulators are never taken lightly. They send emails, they send summons, they call, they do Webex hearings. So now days are gone where natural justice or they, you didn't give me time, you didn't hear me. All that is over. Most of the regulators today do hearings on Webex, right? You don't have to you you don't have to say my lawyer is in high court or my lawyer is in some other city and all that. So I think a lot of those basic usual defenses available to delay and therefore to in a way run away 
from the investigation is gone so i think you know gone are the days where you can take a regulator like it thank you and jag uh, your thoughts on the recent uh, uh, surge in regulatory action against corporates yeah <clears throat> yeah so i think uh, uh, we have already covered and uh, uh, you know ashok ji also referred to the technology so <laughs> i would just want to maybe go you know with the technology as a big uh, differentiator now uh, with all the sort of you know information exchange that they have with uh, regulators internally within india uh, with even outside india so with lot more uh, you know uh, aeui kind of you know instruments automatic exchange of information with other uh, with mlats also you know the mutual legal assistance treaty is also being more used in case of enforcement and uh, you know if you if you really see like uh, the the types of winsome jewelry or the you know the other cases where our regulators were able to freeze funds even abroad you know has happened in the mo mo most of them uh, in the last 7 <coughs> to 8 years right before that we didn't have as many instances uh, or even the capacity of our law enforcement uh, agencies or regulators to take action in foreign countries so i think that is uh, the confidence level is a lot uh, uh, is lot more we have seen even ed sort of fighting cases in uk for example you know is a is a level which is uh, also development in the last 3 4 years and this this changes uh, you know uh continuously uh vyapak is right that you know organizations like us big fours uh law firms you know we are also assisting them in various things i think their ability to bring a uh, an amendment in the statute is a lot higher now with what used to take lot more you know time i think is much quicker so you will see some kind of amendment uh or or you know some some things that they don't like they will bring amendment much quicker so i think that is uh, so the, the confidence level is is lot higher uh, and perhaps i think you know as citizens we should be happy about it uh, that you know some of those things are in the right direction yes there is always a, always an element of misuse <coughs> and that i think uh, you know that risk is always there not only here but even abroad but for the most part i think you know the changes are very po <coughs> very positive thank you with that we'd like to open up the floor for any questions last few last few minutes of questions uh, before we can break for uh, refreshments i have a thought to share not question exactly <coughs> i have been the commandant of military police and i have investigated then i have also <coughs> been the prosecutor i prosecuted and then i was in army group insurance fund dealing with 25000 crores of rupees corpus there as the evaluation and monitoring of investments now i sit as an arbitrator also in the stock exchanges now what is uh, the requirement and what is the need of the r is that uh, it's a wonderful topic and well covered you all guys have done a wonderful job navigated well to the discussion now we have if we don't uh, deal with the end result we will end up half way now investigation is one part well covered well discussed now we need to have a system or an institution or a method or a procedure or procedures which tells us that how many cases identified cognizable taken cognizance of prosecuted and ended in conviction this is missing now what is happening the data is there no? just a minute so i'm just saying the yeah, data i i'll just take 10 seconds what is happening that we make headlines suddenly we make headlines and suddenly it dies down so we are happy and nobody knows what has happened so i close my uh, uh, thought here and <coughs> i rest my case thank you
No, you are right, and maybe uh, Ashok, you were saying something, but no, no, I'm saying I was just saying that you know the data is uh, this much. Yeah, criminal, that's true. Criminal, criminal justice system and the issues. Three percent or two percent cases get uh, whether you know whether it is criminal cases or ED cases. Our system is such that uh, it only encourages delay. The whole process gets delayed. So you're right. The initial there's a burst of uh, media. Uh, the media jumps in. It becomes a big uh, cause celebre, and then within a few months. Nobody knows after that in what fact, happens. at some point in time, almost 80 to 90 percent of SEBI orders were set aside by SET. Yeah. Maybe it has come down to 70, 60 or 50, I don't know. But, you know, yeah. uh, it is because of uh, the kind of right or wrong or shoddy investigation or not doing it in the right way has resulted into so much of issues which ultimately doesn't go into the final prosecution, right? SET is their own tribunal, right? But it, that is the statistics on record. Uh, and we are now only talking about securities law. For general frauds, it is even worse, right? So I think that's something which obviously at some point in time the criminal justice system will have to be addressed. Uh, and that is the reason why some of the strategies where they were saying that we don't even go to police or we don't even file a civil suit for recovery is because people don't see the practical value of it uh, rather than the legal value. Everyone knows the legal value, but I think practically it doesn't work. But anyway, on that note, I, we don't want to keep everyone just here for longer than two hours because that's more than sufficient for somebody to be around, but we'll have uh, some uh, cocktails and uh, food. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, at Bay Root, right? Yeah. 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 So, so please, uh, let's continue discussions and maybe join there and maybe we can exchange yeah. 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 more ideas. Thank you so much for organizing for us. Yeah.